Hey everyone, welcome to The Dish. I'm your host, Anna Christina. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hey, you know what? It is October. You know what that means. It's Breast Cancer Awareness Month. So this month's awareness with Anna is breast cancer awareness. And joining me is a very special guest. Her name is Dr. Alicia Vineyard. She is a breast surgical oncologist at Georgia Cancer Center, and she's also a breast cancer survivor. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Well, I'm excited to have you because I think that who who else, who better to bring light to such you know, a crucial topic? Um, you have really a story of empowerment. You were Thank diagnosed you. with mm -hmm. breast cancer at the age of 25. Mm -hmm. Share that story, if you will. I was actually in my last year of medical school and planning to become a surgeon mm -hmm. and had felt a lump myself. Mm -hmm. I have no risk factors for breast cancer. Mm. There's no one in my family with breast cancer and I was a young, healthy 25 year old. I decided to have it checked out because it was actually painful. Mm. Um, I had the lump removed and it turned out to be an invasive breast cancer, unfortunately, wow. which was a huge shock uh, yeah. to myself and my family. At that time I had to interrupt my education and then do chemotherapy, radiation and more surgery and then kind of completed everything and decided to go back to medical school and finish my degree, uh, which at that point I decided that I wanted to become a breast surgeon. Specifically mm -hmm. go into breast cancer. Yeah. And you know, you point something out to me that stood out was the fact that you had no risk factors. Mm -hmm. You were the age of 25, which right. is fairly young. No one in your family had ever no. had mm -hmm. it. And so what is your advice for, for women that are watching, especially maybe that fall within that age? Because I think there's a little bit of a preconceived notion that oh, I'm this young, it, you know, can't happen to me. But what is your advice for women that are watching? Right. So we do recommend mammograms typically start at the age 40. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't mean that women less than age 40 don't get breast cancer. It's just, unfortunately, mammography isn't it is an excellent screening tool, mm -hmm. but it's not good for young women because the breast tissue is too dense. Mm -hmm. So it's unfortunate. So we kind of rely on those younger patients to do the exams themselves and okay. find anything abnormal and bring it to light. And the other thing you made a comment about is correct. You know, it's only about 6% of breast cancers are actually related to a genetic mutation. Wow. So you're talking 94% yeah. are just a lot of, you know, spontaneous breast cancers, which was the case for mine mm -hmm. specifically. And so we can't just rely on family um, history, history and, and go from there. We have to be a little more proactive ourselves. So if you find something yeah. wrong, you do something about it. Well, and one of the things that we got to talking about, I thought this was interesting because I've taken the, the bracket testing, the genetic testing, mm -hmm. I've gone through all of that because my mom had ovarian cancer. And so one of the things, and this is something that the doctor told me, but you pointed out to me was you took the test mm -hmm. and it came back negative. Correct. Which women are, whew, it's a sense of relief. Exactly. But just because you get that test mm -hmm. and you get it back or you get the results and they're negative doesn't mean that you aren't susceptible to exactly. the cancer. The biggest risk factor of getting breast cancer is unfortunately just being a female. Mm -hmm. And that's it. That's your highest risk and of also getting older. So these things play a part and so I have had women say, oh, because I'm negative for the gene, I have nothing to worry so, about. Yeah. And I'm it's like, that's true. a very small percentage. Yeah. So it is important that these kind of myths get debunked. Well, and I really, that's, those are things, that's what we want to do here is to kind of go through that and not scare anybody. We just want to make you aware. I think that being aware, you, you are your own advocate and being able to know and be proactive about these things is what really essentially saves lives exactly. in the long run or maybe catch the cancer sooner. Um, what are some of the things that you suggest? You talked about self-examination. Mm -hmm. How would a woman do that? So if a woman is watching at home right sure. now, what is the pro what should she do? Right, and what I tell patients is, you know, your breasts change every month. Mm -hmm. They change, they fluctuate with hormones and whatnot. So I always say to pick a specific day of the month. So okay. if you say, the first of every month, I'm going to do a breast exam. We, I do suggest you do it in the shower just so you can kind of lather up and things will glide across the tissue okay. more easily and maybe things that are more abnormal will stick out. Mm -hmm. And you should just kind of start in one area and kind of paint almost your oh, hand okay. up and down, going in the same direction, back and forth along each breast in mm -hmm. the same area, not kind of all over the place. Yeah. But if you pick one area and you just cover that entire breast on each side, that's the best way to look for any abnormalities. And we will actually, because you're going to still be with us for a while, we're going to be going over the signs and symptoms and, mm -hmm. and different treatments and everything. But 
Before we do that, so I have to quote one of your colleagues because he did say something that was interesting about you. He said, and this was Daniel, Dr. Daniel Albo, mm -hmm. I hope I got that correctly. He said, Dr. Alicia Vineyard is doing Star Wars level <laughs> stuff with her surgical techniques. Give me the skinny, what does that mean? <laughs> that was very nice of my partner. So um, I did my training here in Georgia and then I actually went and did an additional breast cancer surgical oncology fellowship mm -hmm. in Miami at the University of Miami. I did that for the past year. And that specific fellowship is just geared to only breast cancer. Um, that's all I did every, each and every day. And we really explored kind of minimally invasive techniques. Okay. So, doing you know, very small incisions, making them very cosmetic appealing, mm -hmm. exploring options of nipple sparing mastectomy mm -hmm. where we make an incision, the woman's able to actually keep the nipple areola complex mm -hmm. and look like they've never had surgery. And that's kind of my goal. I don't want the patients to be defined by those scars and be yeah. a constant reminder. Well, this is some great stuff that you're touching on. And when we come back, we're gonna get a little bit more into it. So do not go anywhere. When we come back, we have more of Dr. Alicia Vineyard. We'll be right back. Welcome back to The Dish. We're continuing awareness with Anna, and it is all about bringing awareness to breast cancer. And joining me is, let's see, breast oncologist, surgical <laughs> oncologist mm -hmm. from Georgia Cancer That's Center. Right. And she's also a breast cancer survivor. So thank you so much for joining thank you. me. You just finished sharing your story. And before we left for the break, we were also talking about one of your colleagues and how he made a comment about you doing Star Wars level <laughs> type stuff. And, and basically what you're saying is that you do minimally invasive procedures mm -hmm. where women can essentially keep some of their breasts, mm -hmm. some of the other areas that make the breast look exactly. like the breast. And that's some pretty relieving and good news, I think, for women going through such a traumatic experience. Why is that so important to you? You know, I just don't want my patients to have to look in the mirror every day and be constantly reminded of their disease, especially when they're several mm -hmm. years out. And one thing that I like to offer and when I discuss my patients is not just we're going to take care of the cancer, but if they do have any complaints, some women who have very large breasts mm -hmm. who are interested in a breast reduction, mm -hmm. you know, we could do a lumpectomy and reduce some breast tissue on the mm -hmm. left and maybe do a you know simultaneous reduction on the right so that they have symmetry mm -hmm. they're happy with their breasts and it's a good positive experience yeah. so it's important for me and it's also important for the patients to have options mm -hmm. and there's certain things like if the if the tumor's small but let's say it's invading the skin often that would automatically equal a mastectomy mm -hmm. and i've been trained to kind of be able to delineate those margins and still be able to preserve a breast. Wow, and you know, who better, through. like I said, I mean, the fact that you made this your your specialty, mm -hmm. you went into, because you were diagnosed in the middle of, of school, in medical mm -hmm. school, you went specifically into being a breast surgical oncologist, mm -hmm. you went through it in yourself. How does that impact how you deal with patients yeah. on a personal level and daily level. Well, I truly empathize for them and I've been in their shoes. I've mm -hmm. gotten that phone call or that conversation of you have cancer and yeah. I know how how bad it feels. Mm -hmm. So I try to think of the fears that I had as a patient and I you know, basically discuss that with the patient mm -hmm. and ease their fears and say, yeah. you know what, this is what I worried about, but you're gonna be okay, or mm -hmm. chemo's like this, radiation's like this, surgery will be like this. Mm -hmm. And it really impacts the patient. One, they trust me, they know I'm gonna do what's best for them, and mm -hmm. two, it eases their anxiety. Absolutely. And I think it was always best to hear from other survivors who've been there to yeah. know what you're going through and be able to tell you, you know what, I've been there and yeah. you're gonna be okay. That's absolutely amazing. And so we want people to be okay. We want people to, to be proactive. And so what are some of the signs and symptoms maybe women should be looking for? So obviously if they find a firm nodule, um, it doesn't always have to be rock hard, but something that feels a little more irregular, things that may be fixed within the tissue that aren't very mobile. Okay. Um, you also wanna look for overlying skin changes. Mm. Sometimes breast cancer is a strange disease and it can actually present as some redness of the skin. Mm -hmm. um, these things should be checked out, especially if they're not getting better. Um, you can also check in your, the underarm area for any enlarged lymph nodes. Mm -hmm. And so these are things I tell skin changes, nipple discharge, you know, an in, enlarging mass that doesn't fluctuate with your yeah. hormones. And really, I think the main thing is for women to pay attention to your body. Exactly. You know, that's going to be, again, you're going to be your your advocate for yourself. Exactly. You, you have to pay attention to these things, and if you do notice something, don't hesitate. Exactly. Um, mm -hmm. It's always important to know 
with time instead yes. of waiting to the last minute. Well, listen, thank you so much for coming on um, and for sharing welcome. your story. For more information, and hopefully I get this right, they can visit www.augusta.edu slash cancer. You can visit with Dr. Vineyard. Um, just call her up and say, hey, need to talk to you. I will check you out. Yes. All right, thank you so <laughs> thank much. Thank you so much.